plays down here in Tennessee. We don't need y'all to talk about us because we're going to talk about ourselves. Welcome in, everybody, once again to Titans Tube. It's us, Justin and Jake here with you, and we're going to be breaking down the week three matchup with the Las Vegas Raiders and the Tennessee Titans. Las Vegas coming to town, Jake. Um, both teams needing a win at 0-2. How, how are you feeling, Jake? Are, are you still hurting? Are your feelings hurt for what the Bills did to us on Monday night? I am just ready to move on. <laughs> Sunday can't come soon enough. You're you're telling me, man. I I don't know, man. It's it's my heart is split in two. Uh, just you know, obviously broken from that absolute shellacking on Monday night. But obviously, I'm not sure how to feel about this Titans team. I think this Sunday, you know, regularly scheduled noon slash one Eastern kick, Justin. It's gonna feel right to get into the more swing of football season. It's gonna feel more normal. And, you know, you're right. You said it. Two teams with their backs against the wall. How is this Mike Vrabel Titan squad going to respond to his worst coaching loss in his entire Titans tenure? So I, how are they going to respond? I'm not sure we're going to find out uh, with the injuries and the way the depth chart looks right now for the Titans. My confidence is low, but my spirit and fanhood is high, Justin. So uh, that's, that's about all I... <laughs> all I can feel right now. Uh, but man, uh, the Titans are going to need a win. Uh, and yes, the Raiders coming to town. This is their first matchup since 2019. Think all the way back to when these Raiders were playing in Oakland and the Titans had yeah. AJ Brown making plays in that game. I remember the big long 90 plus yard touchdown from Dan Hill to AJ. Yeah, Dan Hill from the uh, end zone. Yeah, it was it was just a really fun game, and and it's hard to remember what having fun watching football <laughs> feels like because it's been a while for us. It was so much since fun. We've had a blast. I mean, we had we had AJ Brown scoring touchdowns. Derrick Henry got to the end zone a couple times. Defense got turnovers. Defense, I think, scored a touchdown too. I think we had a goal line stand at some point mm -hmm. in the game. Just just a fun game to watch, and that was on our way to the AFC Championship. Man, those those times were good. And I think they are good because we're still living in that window, right, Jake? Right? Uh, <laughs> there's a slight breeze coming through, like the screen is ripped, you know, and there's like some bugs yes. getting in, but the window, Lovely I analogy. guess, is cracked technically. It's a cracked. It, the window's cracked. It's not perfect, but maybe, <laughs> maybe Traylon Burks, one of these new players, can step up and renovate that window to keep that window solid. Still. I hope so functioning open window anyway um all right let's let's get into this real quick but before we do i would like to give a special shout out to a podcast out there uh, the wild west podcast uh they're a group of guys that all have a, a a fandom to one of the afc west teams and they and they have a podcast talking about matchups from week to week with other uh fans podcast uh or their the opponents podcast so us being the titans uh I was able to have the honor to go on there and talk about our game against the Raiders. So shout out to Rich and, and that podcast. You guys, please go check it out. They have a great thing going for them. Uh, so super appreciative to you guys. Um, uh, so yeah, let's get into this, Jake. So real quick, a uh, little rundown here. The Titans are opening up as home underdogs to a winless Raiders team, Jake. It's really gotten this bad. Is it this it bad now? A you want to talk team. to me about a window being open? We're home <laughs> dogs against an 0-2 team, Justin. You want to talk just, about a, a window being open? I know. what well, I'm just trying grasping for hope here, Jake. And, I mean, hope, oh, hope could be restored. It could yeah. be restored in this game. But, yeah, it kind of feels like a 2015 again, being uh, underdogs to a team that hasn't won a game yet. Anyway, we got to win our own game first, too, though. That's, that's, that's mm -hmm. the thing. Um, so, briefly, you got, got to talk about the injuries. Uh, like, who's playing on the field is pretty much the most important thing. Uh, first of all, Jamarco Jones, what 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 was that? What was that, J-Rob? We signed, um, I guess, a versatile kind of a backup fringe starter lineman from Seattle who has started games for them before. 
uh, supposed to help with the depth of this O-line and he's on IR and he hasn't played a single snap. So what, what happened there? I don't know. So uh, nice tenure there for, uh, for you as a Titan, Jamarco Jones, but uh, the big ones here, Jake, uh, Taylor Lewan, Bud Dupree, Ola Adenai, I think I botched the name, uh, are all ruled out for this game, Jake. Kyle Phillips has been ruled as doubtful, which is pretty much an out designation as far as I'm concerned. And Zach Cunningham is questionable coming into this game. Uh, linebacker, very thin depth spot for the Titans. So it would be clutch if he could suit up and play, even though he hasn't had a great season up to this point so far. Uh, but on the good news, uh, we do get Christian Fulton back. Huge game for Christian Fulton to come back because uh, the Raiders have some very uh, dynamic receiving weapons there. And uh, Don Dontrell Hilliard uh, is coming back for us as well. Uh, so hopefully, you know, he was huge for us in the Giants game. So, I mean, if he's going to have that kind of a role for us in this offense, then he needs – it's going to be big to have him back on the field. Uh, Jake, uh, real quick, I'll talk about the Raiders injuries, and you can kind of – get into this matchup here uh big time injuries for the Raiders as well Denzel Perriman is still out he has yet to come back for the season but he's he's been a huge defensive player for them in the past and Hunter Renfro is out with a concussion uh big time slot receiver I was just talking about the the lethal receiving weapons the Raiders have they're going to be without one in Hunter Renfro so that could be a, a big help for this defense uh, and also surprisingly I wasn't keeping track of this but I just saw the tweet about Josh Jacobs has has an illness of some sort, and he did not fly with the team to Nashville uh, as of Friday. So I guess there's still a chance that he could catch a plane to Nashville on Saturday if he is feeling better. But a leading rusher for uh, the Raiders for the past several years would, would be another big blow to this offense if he can't go, Jake. So so now that the injuries are out of the way, what what, what are we looking at here with this Raiders team? Yeah, absolutely, dude. So you, you talked about the dynamic playmakers on offense for the Raiders. That Hunter Renfro out designation with the concussion, I think, is uh, a massive momentum shift uh, for the secondary who needs yeah. any source of optimism. I'm talking about the Titan secondary, that is. And yeah, you said Christian Fulton coming back. Huge, huge, huge game for him. Uh, being matched up against Devontae Adams, more than likely. And then uh, Perriman on the on the defense of the Raiders, another big uh, hole for them on defense. However, stepping up in that linebacking position for the, <laughs> I almost said Oakland Raiders, Las Vegas yeah. Raiders, Justin, uh, Jayon Brown makes his return to Nashville. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a revenge game for him. So we'll, we'll uh, shout out our buddy Jay on many seasons in the two tone blue. But anyways, this Raiders defense is led by Jonathan Abrams and obviously the edge rusher Max Crosby. It's going to be possibly a bloodbath with Daly starting at left tackle in place of Taylor Lewan, <laughs> likely against Max Crosby. So it's going to be huge for this pass protection to show up against a premier edge like Crosby. And, you know, not a lot of household names in this Raiders defense, Justin, other outside of Max Crosby and Abrams. But uh, Divine Diablo, great name, all-time name for a Las Vegas Raider. Uh, yeah. But he leads the team in tackles right now with 23 on the season. Um, but, you know, this could be an opportunity for this Titans rushing offense, Justin, to get its foot in the ground because they gave up 143 rushing yards to Arizona last week. Hopefully, I, I feel like early on, we haven't seen great running schemes, great run blocking, and great running from Derrick Henry early yep. on in the season. So this team needs to get that going. Uh, obviously, Titans side of the ball on offense. Traylon Burks, where are you at, man? Uh, you know, I, I, I keep seeing these great statistics and analytical statistics and saying Traylon Burks is amazing. He just needs more playing time and more targets. And it's throw yeah. Traylon Burks the ball. Like, and I, I know we just, I just transitioned saying that the Titans may have an opportunity to get this run game going. But, but we were talking about in the, in the recap of last week, Justin, this offense is fundamentally and philosophically broken. So uh, you need to get Derrick Henry going, obviously. That is the lifeblood of this Titans team. There's no doubt about it. But also open it up. Give my man Traylon 10 targets this game. They, they, yeah. they showed it early in Buffalo, kind of force-feeding him targets early in that game, but obviously the wheels fell off and wasn't much to be said after early on. But anyways... Uh, what is your view of this Titans offense matching up against this Raiders defense? 
I also saw a great little nugget that getting Dontrell Hillier back, it's going to be huge having the Titans number one wide receiver back in the fold. <laughs> Yes, wide receiver one is back in our RB2. <laughs> He's got a big role. He's the RB2 and the WR1. Um, like you said, man, I think this this is an opportunity for, for this team to kind of rally themselves together and really see what they're made of. And, and, and we'll see what this Titans team is made of in this game this week and how they respond after, after that Buffalo game. Because this is not the Buffalo Bills defense who has star power all over the field, offensively and defensively, um, especially given with the Raiders injuries too. I, I think, it, like you said, the priority one is getting this run game going, whatever it takes. Um, yeah, like you, like you said, again, the lifeblood of this team runs through Derrick Henry. This team is not going to be a pass-first offense. Like, yes, it would be amazing if Downing would call uh, some passes to Burks on first and 10, second and 10. We got to keep the defense off balance and guessing because they're selling out to stop Derrick Henry. And once they do that, that forces uh, Tannehill to have to throw the ball to middling to bad success. I don't know if bad success is a, an actual <laughs> term, but you, you get what I mean. So mm -hmm. – I, I see, you know, the Raiders defense, Max Crosby, they've got some talent there, uh, but he holds one sack for the Las Vegas Raiders as the entire team on the whole season. So, so far after two games, it seems like this uh, Raiders pass rush is struggling to get after the quarterback. Hopefully, you know, that they're, they're a bit of a step down for obviously from the Bills pass rush, and that'll help this offensive line to continue to gel. And now we're going to have to gel without Lawan and with Daly in. Uh, one bright spot, though, speaking of the line, is our rookie right tackle, Nicholas Petit Ferrer. And speaking of getting Derrick Henry going, he's graded, I think PFF graded as the sixth best right tackle uh, in the run blocking department in the entire NFL. Amazing. Did we find a successful offensive lineman in the early to mid rounds of a draft? Perhaps. I think it's Nate early. Davis, it's, it's early. <laughs> Nate Davis was also a third round pick as was Petit Freire. Renee Davis has been, he's not been a bust like, like the mm -hmm. other ones, uh, but he's been okay. And so maybe the third round is where our bread and butter for O-linemen need, needs to come from. For um, sure. But so, so th that's a good sign uh, to point to in, in terms of at least a, a player developing uh, in front of our eyes. Hopefully that trend continues. That would be huge for us. We need all the help we can get on the O-line. So I, I see this as kind of an opportunity to to correct things and gel and get this offense with all these new faces together uh, against this uh, Raiders defense. So hopefully, hopefully that's what we see, and hopefully they can go out there and execute a good game plan that hopefully Dot Todd Downing can draw up. Yeah, no doubt, Justin. And with the Nicholas Petit foray praise and everything, I did see another funny joke with Taylor Lewan. Probably likely we've seen the last of him in two-tone blue. I feel like he's scratching and clawing to get a second opinion to not be out for the year, Man. but remains to be seen. But I did see a funny joke that all the run left hats are going to be now run right uh, instead toward Nicholas Petit Foray, obviously funny. with Lawan out. So uh, yeah. not to, not to make light of anything, but you know, you just have to laugh through the pain at this point. Uh, and now uh, flipping back over to the Raiders offense, Justin, Welcome back to Nashville, Derek Carr. He is 3-0 and in Nissan Stadium against these Titans. Uh, but this year, yeah. he's seen mixed a uh, mixed bag of results. He's got four touchdowns, three picks on the year. And he's going to be undermanned without uh, Hunter Renfro out there. We've, we've all seen, you know, the clips and the highlights and different players talking about how Hunter Renfro is the top three route runner and he's not number three, you know, you know that kind of idea. So that, yeah. again – big big opportunity for the secondary to really key in on Darren Waller and Devonte Adams and try and neutralize those two without having to worry about you know another top five route runner just toasting you know Trey Avery yep. or whoever's going to be <laughs> clinging on to him and yeah you alluded to it earlier Justin there's somebody else that we might not have to worry about on this Raiders offense Josh Jacobs still yet to be seen if he's going to travel to Nashville for this game so something to monitor there uh, if he's out, Brandon Bolden is expected to start. He's only got three carries on the year. So, I mean, we keep talking about opportunities and bounce back opportunities and get right opportunities because the Titans haven't done a whole hell of a lot of right this so far this season. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, with anybody who's out on your team who can be a threat, 
that's uh, it's going to look better for us. But even at that point, I don't know if I trust this rushing defense nor this passing defense to, to yeah. get it done against the stacked Raiders squad. Uh, but yes, it's going to be all about stopping uh, Devontae Adams this week. You saw what Stephon Diggs did to this undermanned secondary. Thank the heavens Christian Fulton is going to be back for this game. And I don't know what we would have done without him. Diggs or uh, Devontae Adams would have matched Diggs' stat line, if not outdone him. Because if you think yeah. back to that slippery snow game at Lambeau, we had Ugly. zero answer. Even with Fulton mm. on the field, had yeah. zero answer for uh, Devontae Adams. So fingers crossed, breath holding. Uh, we'll see if this Titans defense can get it done. And it's uh, a lot of yes. it too is, is, is the scheme, that, that the defensive scheme that we play to. Yes, it's good to have these players, but they're not going to be able to shut them down like one-on-one. Like, Jake, I, I made a note here because I saw it last week all the time. If, if Trey Avery, if the defense lines up and Trey Avery is covering Adams by himself with no help and Devontae Adams burns us for a 60-yard touchdown, I'm, I'm at the game. So I will jump down onto the field and choke slam Mike Vrabel myself. It's not going to go well. I'll, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm, I'm not going to successfully do that. I'll get arrested. I'm going to face jail time, but I will feel justified because that is ridiculous. In no scenario do you want a French roster player, Trey Avery, going up against a top five wide receiver in the NFL with no safety help, with no, or unless it's a zone coverage type scheme or, or whatever, whatever they do. Just let's not, let's not do dumb stuff on the coaching and scheming part like that. Cause didn't St- uh, Stephon Diggs burned him, left him in the dust. Yeah. Didn't. Yep. And there was no one else around. Like, like no offense to Trey Avery. Like dude, he's you're, 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 you're a good player. You're playing on an NFL defense. Great <laughs> good for you. But dude, know, know your role. And, and hopefully the coaches don't put you in a spot where, they're, you're, you're, it's going to look bad. They should put you in a spot where you're going to excel and, and help this team the most. And it's not lining up against Devontae Adams. So I just don't want to see any dumb stuff. If we're going to get burned by Adams, I want it to be in double coverage uh, with Kevin Byard on him and Christian Fulton. Like then, okay, I'll, I'll accept that. I mean, we, we threw our best at you and you still uh, got it done against us. Fine. I'll accept defeat like that. But I, I'm just worried about the schemes really on both sides of the ball honestly, after that Buffalo game. So just want to throw that in there. No, I, I'm with you. And, you know, we can transition to, to keys and predictions for a Titans victory. How does this team get back on track? How do you bounce back and feel mentally right after getting embarrassed, completely embarrassed by the Buffalo Bills? I mean, you were clinging on for a quarter and a half, you know, even with 10 minutes left in the second quarter, the Titans were still trying to drive down the field almost to take the lead in this game. The penalties drew them back and eventually the wheels fell off as we all know. But how do you respond to that kind of ass kicking? We haven't seen how a Mike Rabel coach team responds to that kind of ass kicking because he's never lost by 30 points before. So I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens on Sunday, Justin, in a, in a, absolutely loser leaves town must win game for both of these squads what are your keys to the game for the titans to successfully bounce back from just getting their face in the dirt <laughs> man yeah we you know, we've said it we're going to learn a lot about this uh, iteration of the titans in this game coming up here and and how they respond and it's my my key might be vague and lame but I want to see the mentals 100% locked in. If the, all these Titans, every every single player and coach on this roster is zoned in 100%, I want to see them pissed off. I want to see them ready to go out there and perform in front of their home fans who they let down two weeks ago against the Giants and put on a good show. I, I, I don't want to see any kind of hint or uh, or any, any, any hint of guys kind of checking out if, if things start getting bad or and th- that's not a trait of this team by any means Mike, Mike Vrabel is known to to be a great motivator to get players ready to play in games even when they're down uh it didn't seem like <laughs> look like the motivation was there against Buffalo last week because uh yeah that, that got out of hand out of hand really quickly I just want to see the mental toughness for this from this Titans team and and to hang in there even when, when times are going really really badly um, that that's going to be my key. I, I want to see the energy. I want to see them pissed off and motivated and ready to 
and, ex and play like you're expecting to come out of this game with a win. Know your role on each and every play and what you're doing and just kind of expect it. Law of attraction, visualize it and it will happen. I'm getting super spiritual with, with my keys, but you know, that that's where we are now. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, so I, I got to pick the Titans to win as, as, as you do. And a uh, very basic score, but uh, I'll take a 24 to 20 Titans win at home. We see, you know, we never discuss what our predictions are, what our score predictions are. They kind of come off the cuff and out of the sleeve a little bit. We sometimes yeah. throw out numbers, but it's unbelievable how we're always like one point away from each other in Lock our step. predictions. So I'm going to start with my score prediction. I was going to say 23-20. Okay. <laughs> and a bounce back performance from Randy Bullock. But that, that's just funny how that works out. Uh, but my my keys to the game, Justin, about how the Titans can come away with a 23 to 20 victory. Uh, I like what you said about mental toughness, bouncing back, seeing the mentals and seeing this team play pissed off and with their hair on fire because you know they have it. You know it's in there and you definitely know it's in a Mike Rabel coach team. I, I love that key to the game. Uh, but number two, just make plays on offense, please. There's been very little to no spark out of this offense. No downfield passing game. No gashing runs from Derrick Henry. Not even a little slip screen to Derrick Henry that gets him in space and rolling downhill. The, the big play is missing from this Titans offense in a really bad way. And yeah. we can argue all we want about number 11 not being there. And that is probably responsible for a little bit of the big play threat of this offense. But there just needs to be juice in this offense. Yeah. It, it, we're, we are watching our Robisky offense. We talked about it in the recap. It's, it's getting that bad on offense. And it's almost inexcusable because you have a lot better weapons, at least you think and yeah. hope that you do, than those old. Robisky offense. We had so, we have, we have Traylon Burks and Robert Woods running routes out there and backing Robisky's offense. We had like Eric Decker, 35 year old Eric Decker. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah we've got the weapons. The talent is definitely there. It's just, it, it's, it's still, it's still reminiscent of Robisky offense. It's not, yeah. not really changing anything. Yeah. And it, it goes to, I don't know if you saw the screen cap going around uh, Twitter. I remember seeing it in the Buffalo game as it was happening. It was the second half. So the deficit started rolling. Obvious passing down. I mean, the game is not over at this point by any means. Early third quarter, the Titans are only down 17, maybe. Um, 17, maybe. But anyways. That would be uh, nice. It'd only be down Ryan 17. Ryan Tannehill went into isolated shotgun, and we had five wide. The five receivers were Tory Carter, Troy Carter, Tory Carter, Torrey Derek Carter. Henry. Both not receivers. Jeff Swain, Westbrook, not Akina, and I can't remember okay. the other one. It, it's that should be a fireable offense by Todd Downing. <laughs> it's we, it's absolutely unbelievable how we come out in that kind of personnel grouping and they're like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we meant to do. I'm that's, just yeah, at a loss with this Titans offense, Justin. I'm just at a loss. So anyways, long rant over about this Titans offense. We just need a couple of damn big plays just a couple of big plays in this game to just juice up the home crowd, juice up your fan base, juice up your team. The players on your team need big plays to, to see some energy. Yeah. So it's almost like we're waiting for Derrick Henry to bust off the big run and to get motivated behind that. But if teams are keen to stop him, it's got to come from somewhere else. We can't just keep giving the ball to Derrick Henry and keep our fingers crossed that he's going to bust one for 20 yards plus. So yeah, I like it. Like, I love the juice. The juice key is, is beautiful. We got it. We get, and that helps with the mental overall fire that, that I want to see them bringing into this game. And yeah, hitting big plays. I like that. I interrupted yeah. you for the millionth time. Keep going. No, you're, you're fine, dude. Uh, so yeah, to end my rant, I got the Titans winning this game against the Las Vegas Raiders 23 to 20, please. God, please. Oh, and three is a death sentence. But, however, you know, you've heard the 0-2 stat. Oh, no teams who are 0-2 made the playoffs in whatever years and this percentage and that percentage. There were four 1-2 teams last year that made the playoffs. There you go. You just got to win a game. You just yes. got to learn to close out a game if you're in the lead, Exhibit A, Giants. And you just need to 
not repeat what you did in Buffalo on Monday. <laughs> whatever we did. Whatever that did. was. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I got the Titans winning this one, man. I don't know where my confidence is in that take and, and that pick, but, man, I just got to be a fan, and I got to bring some optimism and a little bit of juice, like I said. There you go. That's it. We're just fans at the end of the day. We want to see our team win. We think they can. We want to have that confidence. And hopefully the Titans will give that to us and come out with a win. So I guess that that's our breakdown for uh, for this Raiders Titans game. We'll, we'll see what happens. Should be a very interesting game because I know that the Raiders nation, their fans are expecting a much bigger year than what they're seeing right now, mm-hmm. starting 0-2. They had some high hopes, especially with that offense bringing in Devontae Adams. So we'll see. Hopefully they don't get things really clicking yet. Hopefully they wait on that for, for a little while longer, at least two weeks. Um, all right. So <laughs> to wrap up this video, Jake, as we have said, we're not really doing NFL picks this season, but we're just going to pick out a few games here and there. And, and we might change up in how we do the picks and what exactly we're going to predict here. But we're just going to we're going to give you three games each and picking against the spread. We These are teams that we think are going to make Las Vegas look like a bunch of bozos and clowns. Uh, Jake, would you like the honor uh, to go first and give me your yes. three teams? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to start this out. We watched. I watched Thursday Night Football last night, Justin. I had the Browns and an alternate under of 44 and a half points. All was great in the world, but much like a lot of degenerate gamblers last night, absolutely surrender Cobra at the TV because there was a horrible beat in that Brown Steelers game last night. So take these against the spread picks with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. none of us are safe from bad beats. Uh, me included. I just was devastated because I've been dying for a win in the gambling <laughs> sector, but just can't get one. And, you know, uh, Steelers Stanford band fumble into the end zone recovered by the Browns, even a safety would have still covered that game for me. So all time bad beat had to share that one with you. But anyways, my three picks against the spread, Justin, that are sure to come true. Uh, I have Baltimore minus two and a half against new England. This is a head scratching spread for me. I feel like Baltimore has played really well. Lamar Jackson is trying to go earn his money. And so far this season, he's damn well doing it. So a very puzzling spread there, but I'm going to be a sucker and take the Ravens minus two and a half against the Patriots. Uh, My next one is a little bit of a frisky pick, Justin. I've got the Houston Texans plus three against the Chicago Bears. Um, You know, Chicago, not a lot of faith in them going into the season. They pull off the week one upset in the absolute monsoon rainstorm against the 49ers. Uh, But I just there's something about Davis Mills and this Lovey Smith coach Texans team that everybody writes them out and they kind of just stick around a little bit. They might not win a lot of ball games, but there's some good players on that team yet. Uh, and lastly, uh, my third pick against the spread, Justin is the Los Angeles Rams minus three and a half against the Arizona Cardinals. Crazy comeback by the Arizona Cardinals last week against the Las Vegas Raiders who are coming to Nashville this Sunday. Um, but again, much like the Titans waiting and counting on Derrick Henry to bail them out, the Cardinals can't rely on Kyler Murray going video game joystick mode for an entire second half to get them into that game plus overtime. So I'm not a, not a big Cardinals believer. Give me the Rams minus three and a half. Take it away, Justin. Very nice, Jake. Actually, I'm pleased to see that uh, we all or both of us picked different games. We nice. did not choose the same random game by chance so number one i have the dolphins covering that minus five against the bills is that bold i don't know but hey this is a divisional game dolphins are also zero and two i mean two and oh and they are at home will the bills you know um cool off a little bit maybe i mean the dolphins could be a really good team this year so um, I, I would, I'm expecting the Bills still to win, but I, I, I could definitely see a very close competitive game here in Miami. Uh, so I'll, I'll take the Dolphins uh, with, the, with that minus five spread. Uh, next up, <clears throat> I have the Lions covering the minus six against the Vikings uh, on the road against Minnesota. 
Um, Lions are looking competitive. I don't think they've been tested a whole lot. They got their win last week against Washington. Uh, Vikings were pretty disappointing, I thought, uh, against the Eagles on Monday night following our game. Uh, they were more competitive than the Titans were, so there's that. But uh, I was expecting the, the Vikings to put up a better fight. But maybe we'll see what this Eagles team really is because they, they look pretty damn good so far after two games. Uh, but I'm going to take the Lions here uh, with, the, with the plus six. Is that right? I would yes. say plus six in that scenario. Okay. I'm, I'm learning, guys. Yes. This is why you shouldn't take our picks because I don't even know. What I'm doing. <laughs> um, lastly, Jake, this might be the dumbest of all, but with the Jets and that momentum to somehow miraculously pull off a win against the Browns, they have the Bengals at 0-2 visiting. They could be seeing a very pissed off and desperate Bengals team, but at six and a half points for Cincinnati, I'll take the Jets to keep this one a little closer than wow. that. Wow. I mean, Joe Flacco, it's 2012 again, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Elite Joe Flacco. Um, and, of course, uh, what about Falcon Seahawks, Jake? That's an even line. Are we going to bet a tie? I think a tie is probably due for that game. I'll take Mariota winning that game. And why yes. not? You know, why it's, not? Why not throw win. our guy a bone? He can do it. He can do it. Seattle's Seattle's not what they once were this year. Uh, they give our boy a, a W here. Um, so, yeah, th- those are our picks with the spread here. Uh, yeah, I-, I picked a lot of probably not going to happen, but I- I'm feeling bold, Jake. I'm feeling bold. I'm down. I'm down on the Bengals a little bit, and I'm down on the Vikings. So give me give me these Lions and Jets over them. But I anyway, like it. that's it, what it's-, it's absolutely insane how Vegas, whoever it is, whatever you know private secret room sets these spreads and these numbers it is unbelievable how they're right so often you know the spreads on these games are unbelievable makes you think nfl hashtag rigged but Hmm. i'm not one of those i don't actually buy into that that's kind of flat earthy to me but you know (laughs) that's besides the only reason why we lose any of our picks it's because it's all rigged jake (laughs) it's not like if you pick the opposite you would have won, you know, uh-huh. yes. uh, obviously, you know, you forget that aspect, but I think that's going to take us to the barn. Justin like yeah. comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a great football weekend. Tighten up. Let's go get this win. Let's just win one game this year. Come on. Just one. Just give us one. Just one. Probably. Just yeah. one. All right. Peace out y'all. All right. See you guys.